What it do, what it do, it's your boy Rico the Plug right here. The raphustle.com, who got hustle? And today I got my homeboy Christopher Ty Stick Scott. Yeah. Yeah, man, coming from Kentucky. He's a grinder, a real rap hustler out here, man. Introduce yourself to the people, bro. Yeah, my name's Ty Stick, CEO of Get Right Records uh, and Get Right Promotion Picture Films. Okay, so you do music and film. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what real rap hustlers do. They do more than just one thing. Like they say, man, every entrepreneur has to have at least seven streams of income to become a millionaire, man. So you artists, y'all need to know that y'all are more than just artists. You are a brand. That's what the rap hustle.com is about, man, to let y'all know. We bring y'all people like Christopher here, who has been building his brand out here for years. Tell these people where you started from, why you started, and where you coming from. <clears throat> I started off in Kentucky. That's why I first uh, <clears throat> introduced Get Right Records to the world. Uh, I started off managing artists. Then I built a studio. Uh, started throwing shows. Uh, and then I moved to Atlanta. And I, I did Get Right Records South. And I just repeated that same process. Managing artists, doing shows, uh, and, and teaching people the game. Uh, and then I started touring on my own. Uh, and doing something I call Seven Chairs, which is nothing but just, you know, motivational speakers. speakers you said it's called what? Seven Chairs. Seven Chairs? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> seven seats, huh? Yeah, yeah seven, seven seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. $50 a seat, man. You know, y'all come pay and uh, let me spit this good game. Well, don't be trying to slide it by <laughs> me, man. I hear it. You dig yeah, yeah. what I'm saying? So you from Kentucky, right? Yeah, it's from originally from yeah, you know. part of town, Kentucky. Ain't too many artists blew up in Kentucky. What's the independent scene like this in Kentucky, man? You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the music. Uh, shit, hey, we got some great artists down there. It's real slept on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, do they have many opportunities to get to do shows and stuff in Kentucky or what? Like, nah. because I want people to understand, like, if you a real hustler out here, you got to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Like you say you're from Kentucky, we out here in Atlanta, man. You know, you started your rap career in Kentucky. Right. So as an artist coming up, did you have a lot of avenues to pursue your career in Kentucky? Nah. <laughs> it wasn't none, really. Yeah. You had to leave and go elsewhere to other states, you know, in order to do something like that, be a part of something like that. Right. And that shows that ambition, you know what I'm saying? Because. Man, I, that's how I'm here, man. Right? You know, I'm from Minnesota, man. You know, same area you from, man. Right. Right? There wasn't many opportunities, so I wanted people to get that just to, with your grind, you know what I'm saying? Right. It would bring me here, us here today, you know what I'm saying? So go ahead and tell your story. You started off with doing music? Yeah, I started off with doing music. You know, what, how old were you? Oh, shit. I think I was like four when I got my first drum set. Oh, four when you, well, when you got into the gang, like when you started creating your own product, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was probably, I was probably around 13, yeah. 13? Mm -hmm. Okay, man, so you started early. Yeah. So, okay. You was a soldier boy when you sold you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 13? Right. right. Yeah, the yeah. first product I got, what's the name of that, you remember? Uh, I, all I remember is uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, I think like 93, 94, Snoop Dogg, um, Doggy Style was out around the corner. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, right. And I remember, uh, I ain't gonna say what I did, but uh, I just remember, you know, getting my sales up. All right, man. <laughs> seven them seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. That was seven seats. That was actually seven CDs. Yeah. Oh, just fucking with Yeah. <laughs> hey, but look, uh, so you started at 13, you put your first product out at 13. How did that go? How did it go? You know what I'm saying? It went good, man. You know, it was tapes then. You know, seven tapes. No, damn, it wasn't even CDs, it was like, tapes. Like, see, like, how long this man been out here hustling, man? We telling ages around yeah. this thing, man, right? you know what I'm saying? But when you said you was 13 listening to Snoop, I think I was probably about a little older than that. Yeah. Go ahead, man. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, so like I said, I went from Kentucky, and then I went to uh, South Carolina, where I hooked up with, um, was it, uh, Joe Rugby, uh, Tape Hustlers. Um, Name. Um, Some local cats from around your neighborhood? Well, no, they actually did the uh, the, sim the rap symposium. The things that you see cats doing today. Yeah, big words, man. This ain't one of them T.I. You ain't got to use them big ass words. Hey, man, it is what it is. It is a symposium. I ain't heard that one in years. Yeah. How you so, spell, it? spell it, though, first? Man, that's why I'm you. Know okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, at, least you hey. at least you knew something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. But, uh, 
Yeah, like I said, uh, uh, I went out there and started with Joe Rick Reunion, the Tape Hustlers, got a whole they whole little movement, and um, started touring with them, going back and forth. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Then every, damn near every time they had some holding, I was there. So, um, and then, you know, came back here, and then I just started really getting into like ownership. So I took my website, which is www.gettrigstrecords.com. Hold on, hold on. When did you start the website? Oh, was well, I know when that 13. No, 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 13. You know, I did some shit. So all this is what you had went through, and then you came with the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you went from selling tapes, cassettes, yeah, 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 to no. digital assets. Yeah, because at one point, you know, so I was locked up for 11 years, 3 months, and 6 days. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so, that explains you know, it. That, yeah. that bridge is <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know, I was 13 out here selling tapes, then I had a website, nigga. Yeah. Huh? I mean, you had cassettes, you had a website. <laughs> like, right. no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying, like, but when, when, when I, let me back up. So when I was in prison, I wrote a couple of books, and one of them was uh, Master the Game. Uh, the, the let's, let's speak on that. Let's speak on that. We ain't gonna put it because we, we got these folks to understand, man. Master the game. Right. Tell us what this book is about. This is the first book he wrote when he was in prison. Tell us what this book is about. That, that wasn't the first book. It's probably the like third. Third book? Yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, the book consists of, you know, getting artists their royalties, uh, teaching about pro agencies like. Uh, Harry Fox Agency, ASCAP, BMI, CSEC, uh, Soundtrack, Song Exchange. These are the people who actually pay you for streams and um, give you your royalties. Like ASCAP, if you ever perform on stage and you belong to a pro agency, you can fuck with your check. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no way around it. Right. So ain't no artist should be saying they ain't getting paid. You just ain't putting your money in the right place. You give it to your homeboy, he ain't doing a damn thing for you. You put it in the hands of them folks that gonna pay you, you'll get paid. And you're fans of us about it. Jules. That and do your paperwork. What I mean by do your paperwork is get you a debit card, link up your writing account number to it because that's how you're going to get paid. These folks ain't cutting checks, they're doing the rate deposit. So. Right. And that's just a little piece of game <laughs> yeah. from the book Master the Game, you know what I'm saying, that he wrote. The third book he wrote while he was in prison, Master the Game, is for your artist. So, you know what I'm saying, y'all need to follow him and uh, get, get some information <clears throat> on that. But go ahead, and, okay, from that book to the you was uh, doing other books in prison? Yeah, yeah, I wrote another book called Rules, uh, and I feel like rules, the concept of rules is all is, is based on loyalty because I feel like that's what's missing from the game. The whole time you read the book, you think something's going to happen, but it never does because they keep it 100 all the way to the end, and that's what y'all need to get on the day. But right, say that louder for the people <laughs> in the back, man, you know what I'm man, saying? Loyalty is something y'all need to get back on the day because it's, it's, it seems like it's obsolete, man. And, you know, Last of that recent right here in front of you. Man, you feel me? <laughs> so, man, you know the name of your book, that was called Rules, right? Rules, and you're, right. you're also coming out with a movie on that one, right? Yeah, the trailer and everything. It's funny why you say that because, you know, I just started back in the music, you know what I'm saying? And I got a little thing called Old School New Rules, which basically is the rules that we grew up to are old, but it's new to the, the people, the youngsters that's coming up now that don't know about loyalty. Like you say, like, we're going to teach y'all the new rules. Since y'all never had these rules, these right. rules are new to you. Right. So I just want to, you know, elaborate on that, you right. know what I'm saying? So y'all youngsters stay plugged in for right. that. We out here teaching, not just preaching, teaching, and walking in these steps, man. So the books, so that was in prison. You started writing the books. How many books you wrote? Seven. Seven books. I got two more on the way, so it'll be nine. So you went from selling to sex, going to prison, you only need to talk about what you went to prison for because that ain't the important part, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Writing books in prison, becoming an author. So now you went from an artist at 13 to an author at how, what, what age was that? Yeah, I was probably like, I went to jail when I was 17. No, I was 16 when I was 16. Yeah, so I was in county jail, when they came to jail when I was 16. So you, you wrote your yeah. first book at? Seventeen? Uh, no, probably around like, uh, cause I stayed in the county jail for two years fighting the case. Mm -hmm. uh, so ninety-eight. It's had to be around, around uh, two thousand somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two years in county jail mm -hmm. fighting the case in mm -hmm. the next county. Mm -hmm. Hey man, y'all y'all better quit playing with y'all sir. Yeah. But okay, so Arthur at seventeen. You probably had to be the youngest hood Arthur they was, man. Shit, I don't know, man, because you 
you know, I used to soak up a lot of game from uh, the, a lot of books I used to read was like uh, financial literacy books, uh, books about the government, uh, books about money, you know what I'm saying, like the Rothschild family, uh, poor that, well, poor that, that wasn't out then, but what was out then was called uh, A Fool Man His Money by David Rothschild. Mm -hmm. uh, shit, 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Seduction by Robert Greene, mm -hmm. uh, The Art of War, Sun Tzu, uh, Man, you know, I don't know how to do that a lot of time. Yeah, 11 years, 6 months of the day. 11 years? Yeah, 11 years, 6 months of the day. I mean, you know how to, you know what I'm saying, you know the authors of the book titles, man. You know, that, that yeah, you sitting down reading some shit. I ain't gonna lie, I read a lot when I was in school. I got out, boy, I threw the books to the side, like, bro. But I, I think it's too, important for people to start. Yeah, yeah, see, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got to replace it with something. You feel me? You feel me? Yeah. That's, you know, I, I would replace mine with content. Yeah. It's so, the same thing, though. The same thing. You're yeah. right. You're right. So I was still in the practice, but I do want to read more, you know what I'm saying? Especially sure. with all these NFTs and stuff. Yeah. And, so then, now, and another thing we'll teach you about these books. You know, I was always taught that, you know what I'm saying, if you want to have something for a black man, put it in a book. Man, say so, that. you know, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, if you don't want to read a book, write a book. Hey. Yeah. Make sure you market it to the right people, so I think I did. That's all it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kind of edit the information that you put in there if it's some illegal things right. going on, man. Like, yeah. So you went from that to being an author to you had the website. You started the website at what, what age was you? Uh, I don't know. Get Right Records? Yeah. Get right right after you got out of prison, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure when you went to prison, you started with cassettes, mm -hmm. and now you in a digital world trying to get people to get to your website. Mm -hmm. In a day and age, were you using Atlanta or were you was in a. Where I do my time at? No, when you started the digital part. Here, I was here. In Atlanta, okay. So being in Atlanta around what time? Who was like popular at this time from Atlanta? when you was out here grinding back with your music, like, I know you bumped heads with a lot of them. Uh, let me see, uh, my boy Lil Donald, uh, I met him in South Carolina, with him supposing he was hot. Uh, Lil Donald, I fucked with a lot of the videos, too, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see, uh, uh, Moody Day, shout out to Moody Day, too. Uh, oh, let me yeah, see, <laughs> day, <laughs> check, check her out. Man. Uh, who else? Let me I see. Mean, he's been some reputable, so that's nothing you know. You've been out here, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who Lil Donald is. Uh, but yeah, when these day, man, man, Google them. Check that out. You right. feel me? Um, let me see. Uh, uh, young Nard. Uh, long way from the driveway. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a long way from my mind. I don't know who that is. Yeah, that was all. That was a group? The long way from the driveway? No, that was the name of his album. Oh, young Nard. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, Young Nard? Yeah. I never heard of Young Nard. Yeah. Um, let me see who else. Uh, so, Poe Boy, uh, he was out of uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what time, what year around this time was this like? 2000? I want to say probably about like 2005, because I was on, I had a song on, um, on that compilation that they put out. Um, yeah, that song. So it was around the time when uh, Archie and all them folks was popping. Like, uh, yeah. I ain't never scared. Who that was old boy name? Uh, total, total, total. Bone Crusher, Bone, Bone Crusher, Crusher yeah. and uh, Joe, Jim Crow and all that. Mm, you were Midwest, bro. You were probably rocking right with a whole lot of Midwest shit back right. then. To be honest with you, like I never really listened to a bunch of different artists when I was coming up because being in music I never wanted to sound like anybody. Say that shit again, right? You feel me? And I feel like you got a lot of that shit going on right now today. I mean, uh -huh. don't get me wrong, I listen to music. I listen to old school music. I don't listen to a lot of this new school shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's some of this shit I do listen to. You feel me? Right. Don't get me wrong, you feel me? But it's just, you know, it's like we had more to say back then. Right, right. More lyrical content was coming across with a message, a moral uh some deliverance or something right, like that. Right, right. Now, motherfuckers just punching in shit <laughs> and pushing that shit out. Right. Because they got a fan base, they going for that shit. I mean, shit. You know, I was like talking, you ain't got some nice to say, some, 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 some man, value. Man, I'm man, saying, I don't say nothing at all, bro, man. Like, these is old school new rules for the young cunts. We're going to say that one more time, man. If you ain't got nothing good to say, then don't say nothing at all. 
one of the rules that we was taught when we was coming up, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, look, I got a song called 13 Laws. Mm -hmm. After we get off here, y'all go check it out. It's, it's on my YouTube page. So definitely going to check that yeah. out. Man, we're going to have to put that up on, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. A link uh, or something. Look, Billy want me to do that again. Oh, yeah. Billy want me to put that out. Hey, man, man don't let him get over clothes. Yeah, you know it. Man, come back and stuff. Yeah. Speaking of clothes, man, it's your boy. We go to Plug the Fly Guy in Jakai. If you want to get some of this Jakai, man, hit my DM, man. You know, another unchanged plug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right on, Jack. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. bro. Yeah, You're out here doing your music mm -hmm. on the digital grind. Um, Pretty much signed up with the pro sources that get you the money and all that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Doing shows, mm -hmm. getting your royalties. Mm -hmm. See, this is some things that these artists need to be taught, man. Right? So, right. See, I, I, I teach classes too. Well, I'm about to start doing these live streams too, as soon as I can get this uh, situation together. But, uh, you know, I actually own a university called the University of the Game. Oh, yeah. University Game. Oh, tell me, tell me about it. Tell me about the well, University of the Game. Un University of Game. Game stands for the Get Right Academy of Music and Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's basically anything that's entertainment related. You know, we, we, we teaching you. And I tell you, as far as you can also check this out on my website. If you got the skills but you don't have the equipment, just don't worry about it. We got the equipment. Just bring your A game, and we are gonna tighten you all the way up. Oh, that part, that part. You know what I'm saying? The game and the fame, yeah. you did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like shit, if, 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 it's just like if somebody got the talent, not the money, if you put the two together, you're bound to pop. Right. Same thing with the talent. If you got the talent, but you ain't got the resources, you put them together, they're bound to pop. You feel me? Now, your excuse is out the door now. Now what you gonna do? Now what you gotta say. <laughs> you scared of success? Now, I was like, look, old school, we'll put up or shut up. Put up or shut up, man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Another one, man, see, you can't run up too much game on this one, man. Say, you right. know what I'm, I'm gonna blow their mind when they read the book. Okay, so. <laughs> The Game Academy, Academy of the Game. What? Would you say the name? University of the Game. University of the Game. Yeah, it's it's, it's on it's on the home page of my website. Go check it out. University of the Game. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, I like that. Yeah, I got online courses coming soon. Online courses coming hey, soon. Hey, shout out to Renetta Holyfield too, man. Check her out at the TMPA. That's the Music Publishing Academy. Renetta. Renetta Holyfield. Yeah. She's a music publisher. Yeah. She's related to Holyfield. Yeah. Okay. She ain't biting ears and shit. <laughs> I don't know. Just say she goes, she goes hard for, she goes hard for a company. Right, man, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you know, if you're familiar with the man Hollyfield, you know they go hard. Yeah, you, you know, know it. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope, man. So, uh, anything else you want to talk to these folks about, man? At this point in time. Uh, well, uh, um, I guess some folks that just came home from prison, man. Shout out Nunes. Uh, and shout out Tyrone Montgomery. Uh, go check out his books too. He also write books. He got a book called. Uh, a Hawk Moon Chickens and The Truth of Monsters, uh, both on Amazon. And uh, y'all know. We ain't gonna just slide past this because you. We was at the HHF meeting, man. We had a little sidebar conversation, man, which led to a front front line situation. You right. feel what I'm saying? Uh, we was talking about the NFT. Mm -hmm. And I know you got a clothing line also, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. And you mm -hmm. was telling me how you were gonna create NFT with your clothing line. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of like elaborate to these folks what NFT is and how do you do that with a clothing line? I'm interested. Okay, well, I ain't finna give y'all the game on that one, but I give a sprinkle here. Give me a sprinkle, man. I get the rest of the time. I'm saying that's yeah, it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, NFT stands for non fungible tokens, which is basically like um, a piece of artwork that you create, and the way you make it original is you have to register it. Uh, it can be like a JPEG file, but when you do that and you make it a digital uh, file and you own it, um, you can therefore sell it. And every time you sell it, you get something kind of like royalties from it because you, every time it sells, you get paid. And then they got this thing called metaverse, just like a digital land, to where you can actually take that. Put it in the picture frame. Well, actually, they got frames now. I don't know if y'all know that. Oh, so yeah, they got, they got yeah, the little NFT frames now yeah, that you can put in your physical house now. Oh. Yeah, that's dope. So, but uh, you can take your digital artwork and put it on digital land inside of a digital house and make money just like that. That's just kind of like selling a Picasso over and over and over again, except for you created the Picasso. Right, that metaverse thing. 
That's a next level thinking right there, man. That's some next, next level grind, man. I got so, some big shit coming with that. Man. Right, man. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. I was into the NFT world because they want to start creating right. NFTs, mm -hmm. the clothes, the shoes, the clothes, the shoes shit, and everything. Yeah. I see them like, oh, that shit looks so hard, bro. I got to get in on that one, man. I'm going as a person, though. I'm going to put a whole character in that. Like, why not, man? I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk around uh, Metaverse just spin game. Now, you can really be who you want to be. <laughs> In right. the next Metaverse, right. man. Yeah. Hey, let these folks know where they can follow you at, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you follow me at, at Get Right Records 404. That's my Instagram. Uh, that's G E T T R I G H T R E C O R D S dot com. Uh, and is the website the same thing? Website is the same thing. You can... Hey, look, you can find me at Rico underscore the plug on IG. Also follow the Rap Hustle underscore C O M. Most importantly, sign up for the website, theraphustle.com. Create your membership page, man. You know what I'm saying? We get 50 percent off these interviews and a lot of other things that we got going on. And make sure that you stay plugged in right here. Man, give a shout out to the Rap Hustle ATM. Oh yeah, man. You make sure you check out, man. Rap Hustle ATM, man. You boy, Rico the plug, man. Doing his thing. We done hooked up and we bring y'all this good game. So make sure, make sure y'all tune and check me and him out every chance you get, man. Yeah, you yeah. snooze, you lose, man. Hey, man. It's whatever you choose, man. You feel me? We're going to end it like that, boy. It's your boy. We're going to plug. Come on, bitch. Yeah.